What am I looking at, Marty? Hey, Morgan. This is Rockwell's uh, uh, CCW, which is uh, their Rockwell, their software for programming their uh, PowerFlex drives. Um, I was going to show you today how easy it is to program with the wizard of the software. So first of all, what you want to do is you want to click on New, and then give it back to the name. Call it Morgan One, and create. And then you want to click on Drives, and, and then the Parflex 525, and select the drive, and then add it to the project. And then now you see the drive is over here. Mm -hmm. So if you double click on the drive, this tells you that it's a 110 volt drive, a half course board drive, and that's what this drive is right here. So you're connected to the drive right now. Okay. So what I want to do is I want you to connect the drive to the software. So what you need to do is you need to click on the RS links. And you can see that there's a connection there between the drive and, uh, and the software right now. Mm -hmm. So go back to Connect Components Workbench. And we want to connect to the drive. So you click on Connect. And do what you look for the, the second icon. And you'll see the drive. Click on the drive and then Connect. So right now what it's doing, it's bringing the parameters into the software to the drive, connect it together, and you're connected. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to program the drive through the software, and then mm -hmm. after we're done, we'll test the drive to see if you've done it correctly. Okay, how do we do that? So first of all, what we can do is you want to click on the wizard, and the startup wizard. And it's going through the parameters again through, so for the connection. Sure. And it's just a step-by-step. -step menu to go through. So first what you do is just click next. And it's going to tell you that it's going to set the, this drive just in case somebody programmed before. Mm -hmm. You want to set it back to factory defaults. Mm -hmm. So it runs the way you want it to. So the first step is to set it back to factory defaults. It's the second one down. So you want to set all the parameters to defaults. Click yes. So I need to reset the drive. Okay. And then that's taken care of. And you can see from down below it says it's been taken care of. It says yes, mm -hmm. the check mark. So you click next to the next step. So it asks you, I believe, the language. Mm -hmm. Yes. So you want to do English. And the next step is going to be the motor control. These are just factory defaults. And since in this demo, we don't have any load on the, the motor, mm -hmm. there's really no need to set any of these at this time. Okay. If there was a load, we'd be changing some of these parameters. So you just go to the next step. And here, uh, we're going to have to look at, there's a, a tag on the motor. You have to look at some of the parameters on the motor to, to change the the. Uh, these parameters in here, so. Okay. So we have motor and P volts. Yes, and here it's going to be 230 volt. Okay, that's what we have. Yep. Motor MP hertz. 60 hertz. Okay. Motor OL current. This one doesn't need to be changed. Um, it's the amps that are on the, the drive right now. You can move it up to two times what the amps are on there, but this one we don't have any load on the motor, so there's no need to change that. Okay. The next one is going to be the. Motor NP FLA. And the FLA on this motor is going to be 0.26 amps. 0.26, okay. Right there. Motor Enter. And it'll change to 3.3, 3, so it rounds it up. So okay. It's a four pole motor, so there's no need to change that. Okay. And the RPM. This is standard RPM 1750, but this motor has a 1700 RPM, so you want to change that to that. Okay. And the last one, I believe it's a. NP power? Yeah, 0 0.035, so. Okay. And it changes yeah. it to 0.04. It's, again, it rounds it up. So, okay. So, so click next. Uh, this is feedback. There is no feedback. If there's an encoder on this motor, mm -hmm. you'd have to set the feedback, but there is none in this one, so. We leave we'll it at none? Leave it at none, so yes, next. Next. Uh, DB this. resistor? Um, again, if there's a load on the motor, um, you might just put some DB resistors on here, but. It's just a demo with no load, so there's no need to change that. And then there's we're just the stop mode we're gonna use is a ramp mode. It's it's a timed ramp to stop the motor. So Okay, and that's already set? Yes it is. Next. Okay. So here's we're gonna do a little uh, change on here. We're gonna actually run the motor for a little bit just to show we have to figure out the direction mm -hmm. of the motor. So if you want to change the, the speed on here to twenty hertz. Okay. And click the start button. And it's going to tell you that because we're programming through this, this drive as default is set through uh, 
the, the programming on the front of the drive. Mm -hmm. We're programming through the cable on the drive, so we have to change how it's being controlled. So just click yes on here. Okay. And if you click start, there. It's running at 20 hertz right now. So as you can see, the, the direction that's going, mm -hmm. you want to say that that's going to be clockwise. clockwise. So that would be your motor direction. So you click on forward, it would be yes. And then click next. Oh, you can stop. You can stop the motor. It's decelerating. Okay. And then click next. This is where we want to do an auto tune. We want to tune the drive to the motor so that it runs uh, uh, as smooth best as, as smooth as it can. Mm -hmm. So exactly. So what we're going to do is we're going to first of all, if it was a coupled motor where it had a load on it, a large load on it, it was coupled, you wouldn't want to do a rotate tune. You'd only want to do a static tune. Mm -hmm. But since there's no large load on here, we're going to do both today. Okay. So click on static tune. And as you can see down here, it's actually starting. So it's going to tune. It'll probably about take 30 seconds for a static tune on the drive. You can kind of hear the, yes. the drive tune to the motor. And it'll say test complete when it's finished. So okay. right now. It's completed. Yes. So then what you want to do is you want to do a rotate tune. Okay. And on this one, actually, the, the drive will rotate the, the motor to, to tune it. Will we see the, the load spin at all? Yes, we will. It'll spin probably around 45 hertz. Oh, there it goes. It's decelerating. Okay, and that's completed. Yes, then we go to our next step. And this is where it's telling your ramp rates and your max speed and min speed. So mm -hmm. we don't want the drive to run any faster than 60 hertz in this demo. So that's what the max speed is on here right now. And then the min speed is zero, mm -hmm. but you can reverse it in the same six, negative 60 hertz. So we can do a, we'll show that later. We can reverse the load. Okay. And then we're doing our ramp rates are 10 seconds to bring it up to speed or 10 seconds to stop it. Mm -hmm. So, and that's what's said in there. That, that's just default. We don't need to change those at all. Does anyone ever have a need to change that? Yes, they do. If you want to stop like a fan really quickly, mm -hmm. you may stop it. You can change this to like one second. And that'd be where you may want to use those DB resistors we talked about before like yes. that. You have to dissipate that load somehow and you dissipate it as heat. Sure. So, so you customize it to your needs. Yes, you do. So should we press next? Yes. Okay. So our speed control right now is saying is through this cable and this DSI port. Mm -hmm. But because we want to uh, start and stop it from the terminal block later and mm -hmm. put a preset frequency in there, we need to change this to preset frequency. It's about halfway down. There you go. Okay. And those are the speeds we'll be running at. So we click next. And then if we're using, this drive can be run through the front of the drive. It can be run through this communications from the from my computer, it could be run through Ethernet as well. We're not setting Ethernet, but if we wanted to, we could set it up here. Okay, press next. Let's next. Okay, now we're going to set up the drive for control through the push buttons rather than through the computer. So we okay. need to set up a couple of things like this. So the first one you do is you want to start your start source mm -hmm. to your terminal block because you're going to run it through the terminal block through the, the push buttons. So okay. click that one. And then because we're running through the, uh, the selector switches on there to speed, First one we're going to set our digital in, the first digital in. And because it's a start stop, it's considered a three wire start. So it's way at the bottom is three wire. There you go. Okay. And then the next selector switch is we want to change the direction of the drive when we test it. So we want to put that next one to three wire direction. Sure. All right. And then as you can see down below already, these two are set to preset frequency. So just by changing those selector switches, we'll change the speed on the, on the drive. Okay. So that's set. We could actually set some output relays on the drive if we wanted to, to show faults or you know, other parameters. But in this case, we don't need to see those. So we can just click next on this one to go. The next one, we see some opto outputs that we could also set. We don't, in this case, we're just doing a demo, so we don't need to set those. So we can just click next on that. Same with an analog output. We can set an analog output somewhere to if someone to know what, how fast the drive is running through an analog output. But we don't need that today as well. So we can just click next. So now, if you click to the right, you can see the, what's going on. It's, these are the changes we've made to the drive. These are pending changes we've made to the drive that once you click finish, they'll be downloaded to the drive, and we can run the drive to see if it works. Okay, press finish. Finish, and we're done. Should we go over to the drive then and test it out? That'd be great. Well, so everything works out correctly, you program it correctly, then just hit the start button, and it should run at 20 hertz. Well done.
And ideally, this could be hooked up to a machine that would now be running. At 20 hertz, exactly. And the motor is actually spinning. So if you want to, now it's running 20 hertz in the positive direction. Mm -hmm. If you flip the selector switch, the top one, it will change the direction to negative 20 hertz. You'll see it ramp down and ramp back up in the opposite direction. And this is because we programmed it this way so people could customize it based on their needs. Correct. So we're running right at 20 right now, so if you flip the second selector switch here, it should run down to 10 hertz. So you've got three preset speeds set on the drive right now. Mm -hmm. so, so if you flip it back to 20, and flip the third selector switch, it should run at 5 hertz, which it does. Mm -hmm. And if you click the last one, the, it, should run at, it should go to zero. Those are your four preset speeds set on there, three that are actually running at one at zero. Very nice. And then we also have the option to power off. Yes, we hit the stop button. And it would have been stopped already, so. It was That's just already. the fan running right now. Okay. Like After about a minute, it'll stop running. Okay. It's cooling the drive, so it's because it was running. Well, that software was really easy to use. What's the price point on a software like that? This software, amazingly, from Rockwell is free. So if someone buys the equipment and wants to install it on their machine, they can download the free software at any time? From Rockwell's website. If anyone wanted any more information about how to get that or who to contact, um, how, how could they go about that? Call their local uh, Warner Electric representative, drives representative, drive specialist, or myself. Okay. Thanks for the info. You're welcome.